Hi guys, this is gsnhome.com and I'm here with a review of the LG G7 ThinQ. It's time for a handset that's supposed to be powered by AI, among other things. So this phone is the current flagship that LG has, the LG G7 ThinQ. It was launched this spring and we have here the device for a full review. It's a pretty compact flagship, it's one of those Snapdragon 845 phones that you can actually grip with one hand and you can actually go all around it with the one hand and properly grip it. Now it also inaugurated a notch for LG, they went back to the drawing board, there was a whole story and it's probably the flagship with the biggest price drop over the past months. It's now a mere $500. It's supposed to have AI camera, a Google Assistant button, dual back camera with improvements. It's available in black or Moroccan blue or a special rose hue. We have the Moroccan blue hue and it's pretty nice. Now, as far as the design is concerned, it's the usual glass and metal sandwich. Glass at the front, glass at the back and a metal frame in between. Now the back side looks like a jawbreaker, a bonbon if you want, or like a pearl. That's the vibe I'm getting. It's a beautiful type of glass and depending on the angle you look at, it will change the way it feels and looks. It almost feels like it's metallic at some point. In spite of having so much glass, the phone is rather grippy, has a pretty nice grip and surprisingly it's quite easy to use with a single hand which for a 6.1 inch phone is truly an achievement. The notch doesn't bother me, it's a bit uh, flatter and smaller than I've seen on other phones and the measurements are pretty okay. 7.9 millimeters in thickness, I can roll with that and 162 grams, I can also deal with that. So glass, metal, premium, elegant, comfy and also resilient, IP68 certified so it can take water and dust. Also military standard 810G basically, it can take some salt, some fog, some mist and even the occasional drop but from a smaller height. Okay, so we're done with the design, time to talk about the display, 6.1 inches in diagonal with a notch, Quad HD+, Plus, which is basically uh, code war for 3120 over 1440 pixels IPS LCD panel but LG calls it MLCD plus it's got a special white pixel extra HDR10 support always on display and the atypical aspect ratio of 19.5 to 9 and let's talk about the actual viewing experience to do that I'm going to go to the gallery and check out our typical test video which is as usual handy here Okay, so here we go. As you can see, we have curved corners, which increase the immersivity, well calibrated colors, pretty nice brightness, not bad contrast, even in the sunlight, wide view angles. And I found that the black here is a bit gray, so the black isn't very deep. And once again, the notch doesn't bother me. And this player here offers you the option to make a GIF or do some editing on the spot. Now we check out the pixels of the screen under the microscope and you can see the usual RGB stripes arrangement but with an extra white pixel so it's a red, green, blue and white RGBW and uh, then we measure the brightness and uh, we got as high as 482 lux units measured with a lux meter. What this means is that we're getting a good result, we beat the Galaxy Note 9. Huawei Mate 20 Pro and also the LG G6 and it's 418 lux. We score below the iPhone 7, the Nokia 8 and the uh, Xperia XZ2. Now um, I should also mention that there's a ton and I don't mean a ton of options related to the display. You can see them here. LG really went crazy this time. So you have options for the home screen, options for the wallpaper. Uh, you can pick to have an app drawer or not. You can choose easy home for an easier experience. Uh, screen swipe effect for the uh, wallpaper, uh, wallpaper style, screen swipe effects, icon shape, sort apps, grid, font options, new second screen, they don't call it a notch, they call it a second screen, you can hide it from here and you can also customize the background with some hues and also you can uh, tweak the app corners to fashion it up like you want it. So that's the notch area. Home touch buttons always on display. There are six ways of showing stuff in this mode here, perhaps more analog clock, du dual clock signature and more. Okay, there's a brightness, there's comfort view, there's screen resolution, which can be tweaked. Uh, also brightness boost timeout, screen timeout, screen saver. Uh, there's also a mini view to shrink the screen and uh, what else? App scaling, display size and screen color, which can be set to a few modes. 
Auto Echo Cinema Sports Game Expert so you can get your pick. Also you can adjust the color temperature here and some RGB levels. I told you a crazy amount of customization. Now we go further to the CPU. We got the famous Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 with the Adreno 630 GPU. Not very generous on the RAM front, uh, we're getting 4GB of RAM here, 64GB of storage, a micro SD card slot with support for up to 2TB. The international version of the phone will give you as much as 6GB uh, of RAM and 120GB of storage. Of course the phone feels pretty fluid, it doesn't suffer from any trace of lag. I installed a lot of stuff, I played a lot of games including the new Command and Conquer. I had zero problems with it, you can easily run PUBG Mobile. Um, Asphalt 9 and of course our good old friend Riptide GP Renegade but beware, beware of the high volume of the speaker in the game because it's very high. Now as we're playing you're not only seeing graphics I'm also going to talk about the benchmarks. So for example in Antutu 6 we beat the uh, Huawei Honor 10 and the Nokia 8 Sirocco. And at the same time, we were able to score below the LG G6 for some reason and also below the Huawei P20 Pro. So I'm happy with the graphics. Let's talk more about the benchmarks. Okay, so benchmarks it is. Uh, let me just see where I put the screenshots and then we can uh, find out how we did in Antutu and the other things. Okay, so we go here and let's find our good old Antutu friend. Should be here somewhere. Here we go. Now this is Antutu 7 with a pretty impressive result. So here we scored above the Huawei P20 Pro, Nokia 8 Sirocco and Galaxy A9 2018. Now we scored below the Galaxy S9 Plus, HTC U12 Plus and the Pocophone F1 by 30k points, which is uh, kind of a lot. But we did fine in Geekbench 4 Multicore, we beat the Sony Xperia XZ3, the Xiaomi Mi Mix 2S and the Galaxy Note 8. Scored below the Xperia XZ2, Zenfone 5Z and HTC U12 Plus. And finally, when it comes to the graphical benchmark, we got Slingshot. And in this one, we beat the Nokia 8, uh, we beat the iPhone XR and the HTC U12 Plus. The score is below the Xperia XZ3, OnePlus 6 and Xperia XZ2. Somehow, we cannot beat the Xperias pretty easily. Uh, somewhere, the scores are between the Huawei P20 Pro and the Galaxy Note 9. That's the vibe here and those are the scores between P20 Pro and Galaxy Note 9. It's an okay performance, it can remain in the top 10 of the flagship to the current year, maybe something like a top 7 even. When it comes to the temperature, we did two tests, actually three of them, but those are the two that matter. First, uh, 35.7 degrees Celsius achieved in GFX Bench, which is a benchmark, and 35.2 degrees Celsius achieved in Riptide GP Renegade, the game you saw before. So zero overheating. And as you know, we have a special CAT S61 phone with a FLIR thermal imaging scanner. This is the thermal map, the heat map of the phone. And you can see it dissipates heat very well. There's no uh, very high point of heat on its body. With that being said, let's talk about the battery. At first, people were worried. 3000 mAh for a 6.1 inch screen sounds like a problem. Well, it's actually a pretty capable lithium polymer unit, especially if you want to do some uh, video playback, maybe some Netflix, who knows. So we achieved 11 hours and one minute of continuous video playback, basically Netflix. It beats the iPhone 8, Nokia 8 and Xperia XZ3 from Sony. Stays below the HTC U11, Galaxy S9 Plus and the Huawei Mate 20 Pro. At the same time, we did the other test that involves continuous usage. And it's the famous PC mark and the result achieved here was 7 hours 3 minutes. It's rather modest, it's not the worst in the world, but I would say it's so-so. It beats HTC U12+, Plus. Uh, it also beats the Huawei Honor 10, but at the same time scores below the Galaxy S7, Sony Xperia XZ1, XZ2 and Motorola One by no means champions in this area. Uh, maybe the Galaxy S7. Anyways, uh, we go further and the charging was actually okay. One hour and 44 minutes is the equal of the Huawei Honor 8 and better than the HTC U11. The thing I like the most is that after one hour of charging, you can get as high as 85% battery after one hour. So that's nice. Now on the battery front, you're also going to have some tweaks. You can find them here, battery saver, off, extended and maximum, they will tweak the performance, apps in the background, connectivity, brightness, etc. So overall a pretty okay battery, especially in the video playback and charging up to one hour. 
If you want to talk about acoustics, LG has been bragging a lot with that boombox thingy. We have an enhanced bass by about 40% from the LG G6. That's what they're saying. There is DTS uh, X 3D surround, hi-fi quad DAC, boombox, and luckily it still kept the audio jack intact here. And also FM radio. Now the actual experience uh, may require me to open up the app, start it up, fire it up. It's not only Google Play Music, it's LG's own music app. And you go here. And there are some tweaks, of course. You got this one, normalized volume, there's the equalizer, there are 10 channels, there are custom genres for music, there's surround, quad DAC, presets, balance, those two knobs. And let's listen to the music. And of course, you can activate Boombox Show with a special vibration and a special flash of the, uh, well, camera flash. Okay, so one conclusion, it's not very easy to cover the speaker when holding the phone in landscape, that's a plus. Uh, the experience was loud and clear, I was actually very happy with the loudness, the clarity, the bass was superb. There is a strong vibration, but somehow it feels like it powers up the sound somewhere with reverberations within the material of the table, for example. I'm very happy with the experience, with the voice, with the sound, the bass is really something else here, something special. And volume was also satisfying. Okay, now the headphones were also quite good. You saw them in the unboxing. They're very comfy, very loud. They isolate the sound perfectly. You won't hear, well, the car horns, but that's something else. Uh, they're loud, clear, super bass, and pretty happy with the surround. Even I would go as far as to say that they beat the headphones that HTC and Samsung have been offering for the past years. Now, uh, we also did some tests with the decibel meter and we achieved 87.9 decibels. Those were achieved at the front and the back with the typical acoustic sample. This value beats an iPhone 8, Xperia XA2 and the Huawei P20 Pro, stays below the Xiaomi Mi A2 and the Zenfone 5. The other test involves the game you saw before, Riptide GP Renegade. We achieved 106.1 decibels, which is pretty impressive. It's actually third place all time. Uh, it beats Zenfone 5, HTC U12+, Plus, Galaxy Note 8 and Note 9, scores below the Asus, ROG Phone and Nokia 8. Basically, it beats every other phone. So very impressed by the acoustics. Uh, they're going to get a high grade from us. Let's talk about the camera. So dual camera at the back. I've been seeing this for a while on the LGs. This time they fixed the wide angle. It doesn't curve the image as much and as oddly. It's a combo of 16 plus 16 megapixels. The main camera has optical stabilization. The other one is the wide angle 107 degree. There's 4K 60 frames per second, uh, hi-fi filming, HDR filming and the works. And uh, at the front you get a singular 8 megapixel camera with f1.9 aperture and uh, 80 degree angle. By the way, the main camera from the back, the 16 megapixel one, offers f1.6 aperture. And now let's talk about the actual camera experience. Okay, so the camera options, you've already seen them in the unboxing. The one thing I have to mention is that special feature which lets you zoom in one part of the image and a very cool way of uh, editing manually your filming options which I haven't seen on other phones out there. Now let's go to the gallery because we have a lot of pics as usual and let's see how many there are. 224, that's a lot or maybe less. I don't know, but uh, a lot of them have been taken on a pretty uh, windy and a pretty cloudy winter day, close to sunset, but still they're okay. It was a dark day, close to sunset in December, and still I would say we're getting great pics. I can also say the LG curse has been finally lifted for quite a few years now. They've been having trouble with the cameras. The last time I was impressed by an LG phone was probably the G3. The G4 had problems with the sun. The G5 uh, had its problems of its own with the curvature of the wide angle camera and not much clarity. The G6 was also underwhelming, but the G7 seems to do things better. I'm going to skip the selfies because we have uh, better ones later. This is a portrait selfie in case you're wondering. Uh, it's shown here and you can actually adjust the focus afterwards. 
and it's a pretty nice focus. It's no pixel to Excel, but it's quite okay uh, flagship wise. Okay, we're getting past that. Let's go to other shots. Of course, you also get bokeh for the main camera, which is not half bad. It's certainly better than anything that Sony is doing these days or HTC for that matter. So it passes my test. It's no uh, iPhone or no Huawei P20 Pro and here the blur is rather weird. Another annoying thing is that it takes you many attempts to pull off a proper bokeh because it always tells you uh, get closer or go further to take it. Usually go further. I'm very happy with the color calibration and this is the main difference between the normal camera and the wide angle camera. You're catching more stuff with a wide angle camera. And without curving the image in a fisheye manner too much like it happened over the past years. So once again very happy with the color calibration and very happy with the details. You just saw me zooming a lot on this little horsey and there's not much detail lost. That's a big plus. So remember, nice colors, pretty good clarity overall, and this is where we play with the zoom. We played a bit here with the focusing and all that, nice close-ups and all, and check out the zoom ability. So we start from here, then we zoom, zoom and zoom, and once again I'm pretty impressed by that aspect. And here we have a nice texture of some uh, ice left behind by some kids. You can tell I'm pretty impressed by this LG phone. For some reason I was expecting much less. It's not the case. These are the selfies taken with a variety of effects. There's also some augmented reality ones, cute masks and all that. And here even more colors. The colors are so well calibrated. There is zero problems compared to what you see with the naked eye. In the background here we used to have problems with dynamic range on other phones. That's no longer the case. It feels like a flagship for sure. There is no nothing underwhelming here. Maybe the bokeh with the main camera. But other than that, everything checks out. It feels like something between the Galaxy S8 and the S9. That's the vibe I'm getting. I would say it fights uh, the Huawei P20 Pro in some aspects. It has better colors. And also fights the Zenfone 5Z and actually beats the Asus Zenfone 5Z. Also fights the OnePlus 6. So once again, a second tier phone, like usual, but this time... Uh, claiming to be a bit more truly a flagship camera those are photos taken during the day we have photos taken during the night and here things remain pretty good well uh, they don't feel like f1.6 pictures i wanted more lighting and here the flash makes things a bit blue and a bit too white but in general they were okay now the zoom was great and uh, we have a very honest camera that's my impression a very honest camera it reproduces what your eye sees. That's the thing to remember about LG. They're not cheating. They don't, they aren't blowing up their pictures. Things are a bit red here where they shouldn't be. And we have some purple sides if you're using the wide angle camera. Also ugly looking halos when you're using the secondary camera. But when you're using the main one, the halos are actually spot on. Colors on point except for that slip up of the red. Uh, nice clarity, nice level of yellow, but once again I was expecting more light from the f1.6 aperture camera. Overall, not bad. Once again, between Galaxy S8 and S9, that's the definition here, beating Nokia 8 and Zenfone 5Z for sure. Now, on the video front, things may feel a bit complicated, so let's simplify them by going into a dedicated app that shows just vids. Okay, so let me start from the beginning. Uh, we have a cool zoom. I have applied it on a uh, geezer who was working out. Let's try and find him, perhaps. Okay, so let's take them one by one. So we got video number one. Okay, so I have to say that we shot some videos in HDR and also in Hi-Fi. Let's turn out the brightness a bit. I'm very happy with the color calibration, even though the sky was a bit messed up close to turquoise, that's the hue, and uh, stabilization seems fine when just panning, but overall not very impressive, you'll see that in a minute. Okay, let's go to another video, this one here, okay colors, except for the sky, nice exposure change, good clarity, 4K videos spot on, the sun is in front of us and it's setting and no problems with the dynamic range, nice focusing. So you'll see here that there aren't any problems. It's no Xperia or no iPhone, but still not bad, not bad at all. It's a bit shaky, I know, particularly in the 4K videos, but uh, I can actually live with that. Okay, here we play with the zoom. It 
pretty okay results but after 3x the grain set in and here we probably activated the HDR and that's the geezer uh, that's the special feature the special level of zoom that uh, it's activated in a certain part of the screen a certain part of the picture and it's actually excellent okay so that's it the zoom checks out stabilization test is here not very impressive if you look at the branches of the trees they're trembling vibrating a clear sign that stabilization is not optimal in this case forget about what you're seeing on the phone screen the end result on your pc will look pretty shaky and it's shaky in general now other than that uh, we've taken some pretty solid selfie videos face uh, brightness face texture the lighting they're all okay and i even messed around with the microphone for a bit and it was actually not that bad the background behind me is a bit well overexposed at times i would say but it's not exactly the case because we didn't have a pretty strong sun in december anyways my general vibe is that we're dealing with something similar to the asus zenfone 5z or the oneplus 6 or even below the oneplus 6 a bit uh, it can fight rather an Xperia XZ2 but not an XZ3 and um, fights a Huawei P20 Pro. It's clearly below the Galaxy S9, Galaxy Note 9. Good colors, not for the sky and let's say it fights an iPhone 8 at best. And we have also a slow-mo video here at some point which is probably better opened up with a gallery rather than this app. Okay, so overall those were the daytime videos and let's say it again, between Galaxy S8 and S9, the general vibe remains. And don't think I forgot that we also have the low light videos. Okay, so low light videos, here we go. This is uh, video number one and you can already tell there's something wrong with it. Uh, first of all, pretty nice panning without any motion blur or losing focus. But when you zoom in, things get pretty dramatic. There's a lot of grain, a lot of shakiness. And uh, I would say the colors are pretty okay and the level of yellow is decent. Now let's go to the other video, nighttime video again, we're walking. Not good stabilization, things are flickery. There's too much noise if you look closely, especially on your PC. It feels a bit like something the Asus Zenfone 4 would make, something between the Zenfone 4 and the Zenfone 5. Panning is okay and objects will tremble when moving. I feel also that the halos were a bit too big. And for some reason, I have a feeling that those videos were actually shot with a wide-angle camera, at least one of them, because those halos should have been okay, judging by the photos. At least, things are pretty bright at night. So it feels like a second-tier flagship this time around. And probably the biggest drawback is the nighttime filming. Overall, it surpassed the LG curse of the cameras from the past years. Now, uh, if you want to do web, web browsing, we got Chrome. We can go to gsmdom.com. Here we go, pretty flattering sun spider result and also pretty good benchmarks in general. Input is done with a keyboard that offers you an extra numeric row, no love for swipe this time around. And let's talk about connectivity, this time I actually have something to show you and that something is the settings area with a special area for connectivity, there's plenty. Wi-Fi A, B, G, N, A, C, Wi-Fi Direct, USB, OTG, Miracast, Bluetooth 5.0, LE, NFC and um, also GPS, AGPS, USB Type-C 2.0, there are single SIM or dual SIM versions, LTE category 16 or 13, two microphones, there's screen sharing with the TV, Android Beam, sharing panel, file sharing, media server, LG AirDrive, mirror link, so they have a ton of options. Calls were very loud and clear, spot on, nothing to object and uh, be assured that you're checking out these results. They were crazy, speed test went crazy this time, so we got as high as 292 mega per second on 4G, impressive, with a 65.7 mega per second upload, the previous one was a download, and on Wi-Fi, once again impressive, 433 mega per second downloads, with a 25.4 mega per second upload, color me impressed, color me very impressed, this feels like top 5 or top 3 material, if not the best in 2018. We're done with the connectivity, let's talk software. If you've seen our recent review of the LG Q7 and the other review of the LG G6, not much has changed. They sprinkled a bit of AI on top. We also have an AI feature for the camera. Haven't used it much. 
it basically identifies stuff around you or tries to assume uh, this is LG UX on top of Android Oreo. It's minimalistic and abstract. You can see it in the icons. We don't have an app drawer, but you can activate one. Keep the screen pressed and you'll be treated to the widgets, wallpaper, home screen settings and the app trash. Widgets are rather atypical. Some companies like to keep the stock ones, not LG. They're putting their own widgets here. You can do multitasking like this or you can split the screen in two and create uh, this. You can actually use uh, two-thirds of the screen and you can also do this in landscape so this is split screen multitasking in a nutshell okay let's go back here fix this other than that the drop down portion with notifications and quick settings nothing fancy here uh, let's see what else we got capture plus basically an overpowered screenshot feature with some editing afterwards powered by the note taking quick memo plus app uh, and now we're talking about the settings. Now here we have a lot of stuff. You saw the connectivity, you saw the display. This is a sound area with stuff for ringtones, vibrations, flash alert, vibration strength. In general, there are three tiers to your security. There's fingerprint, there's face and voice recognition. Now let's take them one by one. Fingerprint has an okay speed of unlocking, although I've seen better, nice accuracy. Voice unlocking takes about 1.5 seconds, which feels like it's a bit too much. It constantly listens to your phrase and it's pretty accurate, but it's a bit slow at 1.5 seconds. I want it instant, but it's maybe me. Face unlock is the fastest one for sure. So pick that one if you're in a hurry. Other things, we got Smart Doctor, which uh, optimizes the experience here, cleans stuff up, tests the hardware, does a diagnosis, something nice to have, something that you would see unlocked with a, I don't know, custom ROM or special feature um, developer option. There's also floating bar, there are gaming features, you can tweak the resolution and frame rate for your games. Nice to have in a break time, which reduces brightness when you leave the game running for more than five minutes. Context awareness, this is basically a way of programming your phone for tweaks that happen automatically when at home or at work. Shortcut keys, knock on, double knock on the screen, it turns on or off, update center, and I think we're about done. Shortcut key is basically assign stuff to your buttons. Speaking of buttons, we have a special button here for Google Assistant, and this is it. You can actually double tap it and activate Google Lens, and here's Google Assistant doing its magic. From what I understood, Google hooked up with LG and triggered some special commands for this phone. Now, as far as the pre-installed apps are concerned, I counted them all, you know, I'm crazy like that. There are 41 of them. The most useful is this one, Quick Memo Plus. You can scribble stuff. It takes after Samsung's S Note. So there's the size, transparency, brushes. You can add text, you can copy paste into it. You got the alignment, bold, italic, and underline. You can add a reminder. There's clock, there's a music, calculator, LG Health with your steps, calories, and other things like that. Uh, HD audio recorder with those potent mics. File manager their own app store lg smart world and google lens i'll say it again that's it in a nutshell now it's time for the verdict so here we go it's time for the verdict of the lg g7 thank you the ai powered phone with a beautiful back now on the pro side we got the good looks of the phone it's pretty comfy one of the narrowest flagships in 2018 it's got a military standard ip68 thing going for it which makes it more resilient than the average handset well, other than that, other pluses are the solid screen, the tons of options for the screen and also for the audio, also for the connectivity. They really put a lot into it. Uh, good performance, okay battery in the video playback, the greatest bass I've heard in a long time. Very solid headphones, nice looking selfies and daytime pictures, color wise especially. Super fast connectivity and nice zoom and details overall for the pics. Not bad, selfies once again. And on the cons, the backside draws fingerprints. Uh, on the cons, I would also say too many options in some aspects. Um, the continuous use, it should have been better by at least one hour, maybe two. Um, I also have to say that it's pretty hard to take a bokeh portrait shot. It takes more seconds than I would want. Low light capture should have been better, especially the video, which is rather poor. Stabilization, pretty poor. Uh, not a big jump in AI features compared to other phones on the market. That's another con. In the end, LG surpassed itself, we usually tell you that, well, LG made a fine phone, but it's a second tier phone. 
this time it actually starting to feel more like a real flagship especially camera wise now the performance is there the design is there the screen is there and even the camera is there so what's missing even the price is there well uh, lg is not doing so well these days but this phone may offer you the confidence to start believing in them again now the best thing about it is that if you're an audiophile you'll feel the bass and the bass is the best thing about it if you buy a phone for the bass this is the phone for you solid selfies nice screen enough video playback time and solid daytime pictures once again it competes with the xiaomi mi 8 asus zenfone 5z oneplus 6 nokia 8 it fits between galaxy s8 and s9 you can call it a second tier flagship but this one actually aspires to be a first tier phone it feels like something that would end up on the seventh spot in a top 10 2018 and for lg that's not bad this is from gsno.com. It's a bit of a review of the LG G7. Thank you. I will say it's a pleasant surprise from LG. It's better than any Nokia flagship I've seen lately. Bye bye.